Hey guys, gals, and MBs, I'm here now with the TO5, and I've been super excited about this. I've been wanting this ever since it was demoed, and uh, yeah, I have one now. I finally uh, got it after having it pre-ordered for quite some time. Bought it with my own money. I should uh, disclaim that first. Um, let's go over the build quality really quick. It is fantastic. It is nothing like the OB6s I've had multiple problems with. Knobs all feel solid. Uh, build quality is phenomenal. Key bed is just your standard Fatar key bed. That's like the one found on the Take 5. But unlike the Take 5, the first note over here does not bind on the aftertouch strip. And that's not really a problem with the Take 5's build quality per se, more of the uh, Fatar key bed and how the aftertouch strip is laid into it. I've had multiple key beds from different manufacturers. Actually, funny enough, uh, never mind, because technically sequential and Ovation are the same now. And I mean, like under the same umbrella, they're not the same company, obviously. But yeah, my Ultra Nova and uh, my SL Mark III, uh, 49 Mark III, I think that's what it was, had uh, Fatar key beds with the first note here kind of binding. The common issue on the Take 5, I've read it on uh, countless uh, forum posts about it. And some people have said the same thing about their synth even on my channel here. Uh, that said, they fixed that aftertouch binding issue. There's no crunchy first key. I don't want to press it to like prove it because I have a patch loaded and we're going to get into that soon. But yeah, knobs are fantastically solid. Uh, yeah, the end caps are plastic, but I feel like just like the Take 5, the chassis is actually metal. This just covers the uh, metal uh, sheet, uh, metal work underneath it. The only problem I had out of the box was my pitch wheel did not function in the down position and I was uh, kind of like freaking out for a second. I'm like, great, now another sequential synth with um, that awesome build quality. But no, um, I just had to calibrate it. Uh, so if you have a pitch wheel that doesn't function in the down position, go through the calibration procedure and it, it fixed it right away. So I guess they forgot to calibrate it at the factory or something like that. So no big deal. Um, yeah, that said, the, the knobs are fantastic, unlike the OB6, which I know I've made a lot of videos uh, criticizing the OB6's build quality, but the, the module version, at least the new ones, is uh, pretty substandard. And this is so much cheaper, and it's built fantastically, so they have no excuse. Zero excuse. Um, so that said, how's the sound quality? And I will say, like... This has become my favorite sequential synth, um, at least at the time of the video. I say that about a lot of things that I get new, but that's what happens. You get something new, and it surpasses something you had in the past, usually. If it doesn't, I don't usually put it on my channel unless it's interesting. But yeah, the, this thing definitely blows away all the other sequential synths I've had. Um, even the Trigon 6. I love my Trigon 6. It does things that this can't, but yeah... Um, I don't think it's not going to replace my take five. My take five I use a lot, as you've seen in my videos. That's why I got a TO5. But they're totally different sound characters. Even though they use the same uh, the uh, same oscillator chips, filter section is completely different. And uh, there's a different implementation of the FM. Well, it's technically the cross mod, but it's FM, and they use through zero FM on this. It's wired in that way. So they put on the support circuitry that I guess the uh, oscillators need. Um, I looked at the data sheet a while ago to see how that's implemented. I forgot how you do it, but I don't think it's just like a software thing. You literally actually have to have the circuit designed in such a way with the oscillator in place to do through zero FM on it. But yeah, that said, this is like just, oh man. All right. Instead of me rambling about it, let's actually get into it. So I, I prepared some notes here. And we're going to go over the patches I really like. I have quite a lot of patches. I haven't went through every single patch, but I've at least went to bank D, which is pretty far in. It's uh, 13, bank 13, basically. And, um, yeah, we're just going to go over some of the select ones, and then we're going to make a quick patch out of it. And then that'll be the video today, at least, because I'm going to use this a lot. Once you hear what it sounds like, you can see why. All right, so the first patch you get when you turn this thing on is it is called It's an Oberheim. So the uh, OLED screen goes to sleep, which is really nice uh, to sustain its lifespan when you're not using it. But yeah, here.
right. So yeah, as you can hear, fantastic. It has that Oberheim character, which is exactly what you would want from this. And it is tuned in such a way that the uh, filter um, wide open really is, it has a lot of bite to it. It doesn't have a lot of roll off like the Take 5 did. At least to my ears, there has to be some frequency analysis and I'm just not set up to do that. But at least to my ears, I was A-B-ing the uh, since I wish I could A-B these easily on video, but I don't have a big enough setup to A-B them. So we're not going to A-B the Take 5 in the um, TO unless I figure something out. Maybe tearing it in a stand or something, but I don't know yet. But yeah, so that's an Oberheim, uh, or it's an Oberheim patch. And it is the first patch, and I will 100% say that is probably the best patch you could display this synth uh, character with just on the get-go. So that they did a great job in picking that. It has the Oberheim classic sound. I mean, yeah, some people, there, there's a select few people out there that are just like, uh, you know, I don't know what to call them, but they're kind of just jerks. And they're like, you know, you enjoy something and you feel like it, it definitely has that Oberheim sound, but somebody's going to be, oh, that's not a real Oberheim. That's how I hear it in my head too. It's like, yeah, but I think it sounds like a real Oberheim. I've heard a lot of them. I've played actually quite a few Oberheim synths, and it definitely has that character. I've, I've owned some, obviously, um, as you can see through my uh, channel. And yeah, that, that takes the character. It is an Oberheim synth, in my opinion, and it has so many uh, more features than what uh, other Oberheims they have on the market right now, at least, and even in the past. The mod matrix on this is just as in-depth as the Take 5, so yeah. All right, let's go over to uh, some more patches instead of me talking. Let's do the 103 um, OBX pad, yeah. All right, and yeah, lovely Oberheim style pad. And um, I'm going to go to 1 again, I want to show a feature that the Take 5 has as well. And yes, it's a small key bed. It's a, um, you know, it's it's 44 key. I think it's 44 key. Whatever. Yeah, I can't count, apparently. But anyway, uh, yeah, so you have a low split function, so you can still play multiple, like, uh, ranges of octaves, uh, which is really nice. So if I put this, uh, you can, I think you can configure it, too, to be where the split is, which is cool. So if I do negative one, this side will be in a down an octave. So like here. <laughs> but it'll keep this octave the same. So you can do this. Huh, this one has aftertouch, I didn't realize that, the patch. One feature I wish it did have, and I, I wonder if they can do it. Um, I don't know if Sequential is going to watch my videos. I'm pretty sure they hate me after all my OB, uh, ec or, uh, OB6 whining that I did because of the build quality on that thing. But one of the firmware features that would be really cool is if you could set the um, arpeggi uh, arpeggiator. Sorry if I'm not talking well today but the ARP to be um, part of the split. So like if I only want the ARP to uh, work on the lower or upper split, that way I can like have a bass arpeggio and I could play, you know. You see what I'm getting? I can have this arpeggiate and this not, for instance, or the other way around. That'd be a really cool feature. And I am assuming they can do that in firmware. I don't know what would cause them not to be able to do that. All right, so yeah, we already went over the pad. Um, let's go over five. Uh, that's Tommy. Oh man. I want to do this one so bad, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. So let's just do the wrong note. All right. You get the idea. You know what that is. That's Tom Sawyer, obviously. So I'm not going to try and play it in the correct note because you know how draconian, um, AI analysis is these days of video, so probably just mark this as a copyright infringement, because that's cool. All right, six, uh, Sokka Keys. I love this one. All right, let's see. I need to 
My playing is not going to be really well today because I am demoing the synth and I'm bad at trying to think of what to play and demo at the same time, so bear with me. have to dig into that but I think that's using some kind of cross mod maybe not um because you hear a fifth in there so probably not but yeah lovely patch uh the thing about this synth and usually like the take five I didn't like any I'm sorry to say I did not like any of the presets on it I thought the presets were pretty bad on the take five it did not sell the synths um I would say at least half the presets on this thing are usable and awesome. I would say about 30% are like purely awesome. They're like gold and then half of them are usable and so forth. So yeah, it's like there's presets in here I want to dig deep into and figure out how they did it because they just, they inspire you to play and that's why I'm going over these. So yeah, Stargazer is pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, we have a split already in here, I see. Cool, so we have that on the aftertouch. So yeah, really cool. Uh, 115, so that's this one. Oh no, that can't be right. I don't like organ sounds. What am I missing? Huh. All right, I guess we'll pass that. I thought that was okay. So now we're going to go to bank three and we're going to go to patch 10. Yep, this one. This one is fantastic. That's using sync, and I think the sync uses the uh, through zero FM feature, so that's it's really awesome. It's something I would make, so that's cool. It's kind of a dulcimer style patch. Kodo dulcimer almost. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's go to bank five, and we're gonna go into two. This one's really nice. This one is just so uh, synth wave. Yeah, so that really sells the Oberheim character again. So it's just, yeah, it's it's great. Uh, was that one of the ones that, oh yeah, the, the gongs was interesting. It's using the cross mod but it's not syncing the oscillator, so. It's like the FM functionality of the synth. Absolutely adore that one. That one's pretty cool, especially, you know. It gives me the uh, Chrono Cross uh, soundtrack vibes. Awful, awful game. <laughs> 
I could never get through it. It was so boring, but it was such a pretty looking game with a really good soundtrack. I don't. Chrono Trigger was such an awesome game, and then Chrono Cross comes out, and I just could not. I couldn't even get past past like disc one. I I don't even know. I got like in about. 20 hours into it and I'm just like this is awful but the soundtrack is a standout I actually bought the soundtrack uh separately after really liking the soundtrack and being like well I'm never going to finish that game to actually listen to that soundtrack wasted graphics and wasted soundtrack on an awful game but yeah I was saying this this reminds me of that uh go listen to the uh Chrono Cross soundtrack and you'll know what I mean Yeah, so lovely thing. It's, it's something you don't think an Oberheim synth can do, but hey, here we are. So that's kind of why I feel this is the the goat of all Oberheim synths at this point. Yeah, it's the budget synth, but damn, it doesn't it doesn't have budget features. That's that's the cool part. All right, we're going to bank seven, and I think it's sixteen. Oh yeah, triangles. Um, all right, back to the whole theme of uh, Chrono Trigger, which is the, it's a superior game to many games, and that one's fantastic. But yeah, you have the music box in the opening, and this reminds me of a music box. Yeah, there's a little bit of voice stealing there because it has a long decay, but I don't really mind the voice stealing on this. I can play around it. The um, Yeah, the OB6 obviously has one extra voice, and the OBX8 or whatever it has. Uh, is it the OBX8? I always get the numbering confused. The new one, the new expensive flagship Oberheim synth is an 8 voice, but five voices is enough if you uh, really mess with them, especially when you see the feature set. Yes, do I wish this was the TO8, for instance? Of course I do, but that sound. Is that something you think of when you think an Oberheim synth? Absolutely not. You think of uh, prog rock, um, like hitting uh, pads and things like that and leads in prog rock songs. And you, you think of that specific Oberheim sound, but not this, but it can do it. And, uh, yeah, I, I, it's probably one of the most convincing Celesta slash music box patches I've ever heard on an analog synth. Yes, I understand it's technically a hybrid synth because the VCAs are digital and the uh, oscillators and filter are analog, but whatever, you know. The VCAs ain't making that sound. That That's the oscillators, and maybe they're pinging the filter in there. I know you can't really get the filter to resonate, but... You can get it to do some weird things when you drive it just right. I have to go through that patch. Absolutely lovely. All right, let's go to um, bank A, which is technically bank 10 and 2. What was 2? Oh, yeah, GX Dreams. Let's do this. As weird as it is, I'm almost getting CS80 vibes from that. And I know people are going to like lose their shit if I say this, but I don't think the CS80 is as fantastic as a, sound, a sounding synth as the Oberheim lineage is, but that's just me. It's like an Oberheim meets a CS80 kind of style uh, sound here. I'm trying to like incite its velocity sensitivity and then I realize velocity is not even on on this patch. Lovely patch that really shows off the uh, brashness that you can pull off on Oberheim style, like at the sem filter and things like that. And just the oscillators in this are so aggressive. But that filter just tames it so well. All right. Um, I don't know 
know why I had that one. Yeah, you know what? I probably wrote these down wrong. I don't know. Maybe is it 13? No. Oh, it is. Let's mess with that and add some of the reverb. The reverb isn't bad. It's like the Take 5 reverb. Um, I thought the Take 5 reverb wasn't that great until I really started messing with it. I don't mind it. It's still not as good as a pedal, obviously, and it's definitely not as good as the Peaks reverb. Turn the size up, turn the decay quite up, add some low-pass filtering. It's not too bad. Got to make it a little drier on the drier side. But yeah, that that brings out the filter character. Absolutely, that resonance, and it's it's beautiful. Uh, let's go into the bees. Hopefully, I oh damn, I'm in the no, I'm in the right area, so I'm in A13. Um, all right, so let's do this. Bank B, and let's go into nine. Yes, magical bells. Can add a, I'm gonna add the delay to that. I love the delay in the take five in this one, the BBD one. So take five and TO5 share uh, the similar effects, if not the same effects. I think this may might have an Oberheim style phaser, but yeah, at least most of the other effects are awesome. So. Really gorgeous. All right, so we are in B still. What is another B that's nice? So that's B9. We did B3, right? Did we do B3? Uh, let's see. So it's uh, B9 and then B15. Oh, yeah, Fields Pad. Yeah, I like that. That yeah, really shows that you can do some really dark character with this and just not... Again, it, it's an Oberheim-sounding synth that can do non-Oberheim things. It's so versatile. As long as you can do it with a two-pole filter that doesn't self-oscillate. But, yeah, that is what it is. All right, so we're still in Bs. I think those are the two cool B ones. I think I made it to D, and then I stopped because there's just so many patches. I was just, like, overwhelmed with how many good ones that there were. Um, C03. So let's go to bank C and three. Oh, yeah, of course. Another OB time. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Let's do that with a split. There you get the idea. Definitely shows off the character again. All right, so the nine. Uh, oh, yeah, this one, whatever that's called. Giz wow. Giz wow. Yo. Yeah, that. That one. That one's great. 
What we're going to do is we're actually going to put in, I'm going to record a quick sequence. Uh, sequence. Pretty simplistic patch, but God, it's gorgeous. But we'll see in a minute how you can just make an easy patch on this that just sounds so wonderful to begin with. All right, so 9, 14, so C14. Steppy, steppy arpy, I love this one. This one's fun to play, obviously, as an arp, but it's also fun to sequence. This would be the perfect one where I wish you could have a separate ARP on the lower section versus the upper or something like that. So, I mean, if Sequential's listening, please do it. I will I will go on the forums and ask about that one. But here, like, let, let, let's just, like, simulate that. I could do this. Um, we'll do the bass line. I always have a problem playing bass lines, so that's why I wanted that. with the uh, reverb of that. We're going to make it a little more massive. So that would be really cool if you could have the ARP, like I could hold the ARP down there and not have to have the sequence. Or you could even like have a sequence and the ARP running at the same time. Things like that. I mean, it, I, I feel it's a software thing. Yeah, I don't think there would be a hardware reason why you couldn't do that. All right. Um, fabric soft? No. Oh, yeah. D. So I, the last one in D is actually pretty cool. D16. Electromechanic. And obviously, by the name, what would you think? Yes, it's a Rhodes patch. But it is an FM-style Rhodes patch, and it sounds super, super realistic, which usually uh, I can like easily tell it's an FM Rhodes patch. It's like you, you get that Doogie Howser sound. You, you obviously you get the Doogie Howser sound in the 1980s, like made-for-TV ballad sounds where they're trying to like imitate a modern like or current sound of the uh, era of the 80s like a, a hit single but they didn't obviously want to pay for the hit single so you get some fake cheesy roads from an fm synth. I, I don't like fm roads generally but this one is a standout i do like roads just not fm so yeah so 
something like this, I guess. actually decently convincing yes it doesn't sound exactly like a real Rhodes but it definitely sounds better than your standard DX7 style Rhodes in my opinion maybe it comes down to the reverb I don't know no take that back it actually still sounds pretty good and they're using the uh, chorus on there but we can make it a little interesting what was I doing earlier um, yeah let's make it a little interesting let's let's record a quick sequence style you know style really cool love it so yeah that that's as much as i've went through with the presets but we're not done with this video yet we're gonna make our own patch it's not going to be a very complex patch but i just want to like really get um drill in how good this thing sounds just and how easy it is to do shit on so let's make an init patch oh then a patch. Luckily, the uh, layout is pretty much a take five with different filters. All right, so. All right, let's engage our second oscillator. So um, one thing I don't like about the UI design is, is you can't, if you only have a single um, oscillator on, you can't just turn it off. So like, yeah. Um, waveform, I should say. I wish you could just turn off all the waveforms so it's easier to select uh, what you want quicker, but now you have to, like, if I want a different waveform, so if I want this, I'd have to do that and then click that versus clicking that, um, turning this off first or whatever. It's just order of operations. It's not any more clicks or anything like that. It's just, I'm like, weird thing that you can't just turn off the oscillators. I, I understand that if you have... Yeah, just I wish you could just turn them what, them all off so you can just choose the one you wanted. I don't know how else to put that, but just a little gripe on the UI. But other than that, we're going to go. It's just um, two um, sawtooth waves. And to make it sound massive, we just use this awesome detune, which I love this detune thing because it has a little light that turns on to tell you detunes is active. So... And that already sounds massive. So let's add some release to that. So yeah, fully open, it's super bright. All right, uh, let's do one of my favorite things, obviously on any sequential synth, stereo sequential synth, and that's add to pan spread. And it's just, I used to not like pan spread until I heard how it's implemented on on sequential synths. Um, I guess I kind of like it on the peak after the latest update. It does it a little differently, but yeah. So we go here, we go to voice spread. Now we're gonna go to pan. I still wish this had a dedicated pan spread knob. I'm sure you could take something off of here. Take the, uh, okay, I use Pornamento. Uh, God, what can you take off? Add an extra knob. I'm, I'm kind of kidding. It's already made, so you really can't, but yeah. Um, I wish there was a pan spread knob right on the thing. Uh, maybe add it as a shortcut. That'd be pretty cool. Like hold down low octave and vintage, for instance, for pan spread. I don't know. That'd be cool. I just use it so often that uh, voice spread to panning is just like one of my go-to things I use in patches. So we're going to turn this up to about 100. Let's add a sub. There we go, we already have that awesome. Uh, 
um, Ober Oberheim character. So let's hear that awesome filter. So to do that, we're going to use the filter envelope. We're going to turn up, just crank the resonance. This will not self oscillate, but damn, does the resonance sound great. It's very sizzly. Let's turn that down to around there. Maybe a little higher. the awesome delay to that we're going to use the bbd i think the bbd is one that ping pongs like continuously where the regular delay while it is stereo it'll only ping pong the once if you have uh, panning enabled you have to have panning enabled for this to work but yeah the bbd kind of does a ping pong thing so let's obviously the time change does the bbd thing and it changes pitch but yeah to the split. And I don't know, I, I'm sure most people that are watching this video have seen other videos already like cover this synth before it was uh, officially released to the public. Or, yeah, you can change the volume levels of the oscillator, so don't fret. It's not just all on and, and off. You just hold it, and then you use the value function. Actually, a really nice and clean way of doing it, but yeah. So you can do that for noise, too, and all of the oscillators. So. Let's add the reverb. Turn it to around there. We're going to turn the size all the way up. Pre delay down. Decay here. And that's with that much resonance. That's why I love the sim filter. And. The only SEM filters I've really absolutely loved, though, have been on sequential synths. The uh, SEM filter on the Micro Freak or the uh, Mini Freak. The Mini Freak, that's a SEM style filter. Didn't really like it. It doesn't sound like a SEM filter to me. I will actually... And I've not found a digital emulation in a hardware synth that I like. Um, I've heard some software emulations of SEM filters that sound pretty bang on, but... It's a soft synth. I don't do soft synths here. So don't ask how this compares to a soft synth. I don't use soft synths. I don't know. I hate when people ask me, oh yeah, what plugin can, uh, does that? I, I don't know. I don't use plugins. I don't care. this right yeah i <laughs> obviously it is becoming one of my favorite synths as you can hear how i'm just talking about it um yeah i i can't fault anything for it other than my pitch wheel not being calibrated out of the factory quick fix but god that freaked me out because i i've been bit by uh sequentials build quality in the past and this one's the exception so is the take five i know the early take fives had some build quality issues but i don't see really any yet so yeah, that said, that's my first look at the T05. You're going to be seeing a lot of it. Oh, uh, actually, before we end, let's listen to the vintage, huh? Actually, I'm going to 
down there if you're doing a pad. It sounds really cool. That's how the uh, Tom Sawyer patch will works on this. They they crank up the vintage so you can get the uh, envelopes to trigger at weird uh, like different staggering intervals. All right, yeah. That said, probably, oof, it's really becoming one of my favorites since we didn't even go over a lot of the other features. We didn't go over the pulse width modulation and things like that, which absolutely sound really fantastic on this. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to end the video right now. Uh, I'm at like 41 minutes. It's already long enough. I don't think people are going to really stick around that long. So um, I'll have another video where we just design some patches and we listen to some of the waveforms. The triangle sounds absolutely wonderful on this that is the one take down or the letdown on the take five takedown i was gonna say takedown but the letdown on the take five is is it has yes it's a sine wave which is cool on an analog uh, synth but i wish it had a triangle which is a little more defined it has a little it has a tiny bit of like harmonics in it if that makes any sense i know it's not supposed to but like when you peek up in the, uh, I, I don't know how else to put it. it. It sounds different to me, um, a sine wave versus a triangle. I mean, they're not supposed to sound all that different, but they do when you filter them in a specific way where you get a little bit of weird filtering going on with a triangle wave where you just lose the volume because there's no uh, harmonics in the sine wave. That said, this has an awesome sine wave, and we'll go into that in the future. Actually, let's just hear it. Uh, it's already a long enough video, so... Let's do that. Ah, oh, my synth is actually out of uh, tune. I should calibrate it. But it's out of tune in a pleasant way. I'll go with that. And vintage is not. Should have been uh, erased when I made a new patch, but yeah. And uh, while we're at it, let's listen to the. And of course, we have through zero PWM too. And that's a poly uh, poly destination, so you can use the poly LFO and make the top end uh, PWM faster than the lower end if you wanted to. Things like that. All right, yeah, I'm done awesome synth probably it's slowly becoming it, it's probably going to be my favorite synth at this point yeah it's only five voices and has a very distinctive character but it's super versatile as you heard from a lot of the presets and just me messing with it yeah so uh look out uh for this in the future on a lot of videos uh one thing i will say my next video is going to be of the uh hologram from yeah so or sorry uh the microcosm from hologram i, I sorry i'm just yeah, still thinking of this synth, but I got a microcosm, um, and it is absolutely fantastic. It is, uh, I need to really sit down and uh, learn it. Um, I didn't want to have it hovering above here. I didn't want to drop it. I'm kind of clumsy like that, and that would suck. A brand new synth and brand new pedal. But I will say that uh, Hologram sent it to me, so um, I'm super stoked for that. I'm like... <sighs> It's very flattering for a company like Hologram to think your stuff is worthwhile for them to send you an awesome pedal, especially like the Microcosm. And I didn't want to say this when they reached out to me, but I was going to buy one on my own. So <laughs> it's like, okay, free pedal? Of course I'm going to say yes. Uh, and, you know, it just came yesterday. I'm going to sit down and play with it quite some a little, little bit deeper and figure out how it works and everything. And my next video will, I'll probably do the TO5 and the microcosm together because I think that'll make a really good combo. But I might do the take five and the microcosm, not sure yet. Um, or I'll do the peak in the microcosm. Uh, which one do you want to see? I guess I could make a uh, poll and see what you want to hear with the microcosm. I'll, I'll do that. But yeah, I love this thing. Such a good synth. Yeah, and like I said, super stoked about the uh, microcosm. Um, so that's coming soon. All right, 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like my content, uh, go ahead and subscribe. All right, bye.